Hi everybody! <laughs> it's me starting the stream alone today again. I mean, how are you? First of all, can you hear me? Is the microphone loud enough? Am I loud enough? All right, so, okay. Um, hi, I'm in my hometown now. So this is <laughs> the back, in the back is uh, my, um, what do you call it? My house. My parents' house, to be honest. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. I'm checking the chat right now to see what are you talking about? Oh, loud and clear. <laughs> I made you jump. Holy shit. Sorry. All right. How are you, lads? I mean, how are you? I just heard like, that yesterday there were like at least two match shooters. Mass shootings happen in the USA. I hope you all stay safe. I mean, it's it's scary. This hurt like new mass shooting every day. But anyway, today is May Day and it's also my birthday. I <laughs> I was born on May Day, so yep. So there was, I heard that there was a mass shooting in Texas and then another mass shooting in South Carolina. <sighs> What's going on, man? I mean, it's really depressing. Well, that's my mom walking around, making noises. <laughs> that's EJ. <laughs> you see your, a little bit of your face, your handsome face. <laughs> I don't want to be on camera anymore. <laughs> ever since Luna got me the worst haircut I've ever had in my entire life. And I used to have a mullet for most of my childhood. Now I have a mini mullet, a micro mullet. <laughs> I had, I just had to go look how chopped up it is on the side. You cannot make this look good. There's no way. I put so much wax in my hair. It's the worst. There's nothing you can do with it. Look at this. Kiki's looking at you, watching you. I know. she. Her hair looks better than mine. <laughs> Look at this. Look what they, what is this? <laughs> it's horrible. Can you make it, can you do anything with this, Luna? Um, I mean, I don't even understand what she did, what the hairstylist did to this. Um, Look at this, folks. I mean... All I can think is just don't turn my head that way. No, that's not just gray hair. There is gray hair there, but that's not all that is, Kenny. I promise you. They literally, it's like. There is gray hair. In there it. are parts where they chopped it to the skin. And there are parts. Look at this line. That's not just gray hair. No, not at all. No. This is like almost to the skin. Why would you do that? It's like a three-layer haircut. Like, what is that? That's not exactly what I would call a fade. It's like, what is that? Look at this. Who gives a haircut like this? You don't do that. I'm trying to fix it. It's up here. Stay up here. That's not where my hair parts. She like invented a place for my hair to part where it doesn't part. I'm very upset. And this is like three weeks later. I didn't ask for any of this, by the way. We said to make that not to make it long on the sides because my ears are too big. I literally said, don't make it short on the sides. It's the exact opposite of what I asked for. You wear extra for skin fade here. Here we don't ask for it. <laughs> Even now we do not ask for this. See, Blue Swallow says it's interesting barber work. It's awful. <laughs> like awful. I just am not. I'm gonna. I'm not going to barbers anymore. I'm gonna grow my hair long. Luna doesn't like my hair long, mm. but guess what, Luna? My hair is long from now on. <laughs> I'm never getting it cut short again. Never. 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 So anyway, um, hi everybody! Happy birthday to oh you! Oh no! Happy birthday to you! Oh no! Happy birthday, dear Luna! Oh no! Happy birthday to you! By the way, you don't announce your own birthday. Really? I heard you. Why you not? you wait for me to come and care. tell everybody. I don't 
don't care. That's so no, funny. That's no birthday shaming. If you were, yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, self crit. I hereby. I self crit you. I hereby recant the birthday shame. Mm hmm. Did you make a wish? No, I did not. Hold on. Get ready to blow out your candle. Oh my gosh. Make a wish and blow out your candle. Come on. Here we go. Oh no, you're cursed. That doesn't work at all. Oh <laughs> no, I cursed Luna on her birthday. You can't blow out a candle because it's broken. Oh my god. <laughs> you're cursed. <sighs> Sorry. So everybody, please um, uh, do whatever incantations you know to uncurse Luna on her birthday. We're just using the webcam here because, once again, never buy a GoPro. GoPro sucks. The GoPro is the worst camera in history. Look, there's a fly right on the GoPro. It's attracting flies. That's how yes. horrible it is. Garbage, garbage webcam. I know. Everyone always, you know, everyone likes to make these excuses for crap. Yeah. They're like, well, it's not really designed to be a webcam. That's just an extra just feature. Just don't it's put like, it as a function no, as a no, fucking webcam. It's a it's a it's supposedly name brand expensive piece of gear that markets itself as being a webcam. I don't yes. care if that's the primary function. It should work. It never works. How many weeks have we started late? Because we started late this week. How many weeks have we started late because of this GoPro? Oh my gosh, this is more than a half of the weeks that we've been using the GoPro. I know. It's a it's garbage. Do not buy a GoPro. There are better products. That's all I'm saying. I don't. I, I want to start doing. We talked about this. I want to start doing reverse sponsorships. Yeah. Where we do like an ad for how terrible a product is in our videos. And the first one should be GoPro. GoPro will be our first reverse sponsor. And then if they want to pay us, we'll stop doing it. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Kind of like a hostage situation. <laughs> is that blackmail? Is it blackmail if you do it totally, like openly? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Is that illegal? I'm curious. Is that if, illegal? I, I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> if we're just like, we're going to keep making videos about how terrible GoPro is until they pay us to stop. You mean honest is that ads? that illegal? That's honest yes, ads. Yes, honest ads. Do not buy GoPro. Save versus Capital says, at least you can have a real beard. Well, I've never been super happy with my beard, but now I'm really not happy with it. Look at, like we pointed this out before. This is still growing in. She chopped a line. It was a lot more noticeable. Now it's still noticeable, though. A freaking skin line. She just like <laughs> shaved it with a straight razor between my hair and my beard. Who does that? It's Nobody. Weird. I've never seen that before. It is. It weird. makes no sense. It's awful. <sighs> so anyway, attack ads. Exactly the good morning. Yeah, I want to do like attack ads against products that that scorn us um and plus like the balance but there's just no balance between the beard and the hair none whatsoever it's just awful i'm so i i can't stop talking about it because i'm so it's traumatizing <gasps> neighbor dog can you all hear the dog is it annoying we can't do anything about yeah, it really but about it'd, be, it. it'd be good to know that dog is a very lousy Ah, it might be illegal for me, but not for Luna. So we just have to make sure that only Luna does the attack ads. And Why is that? Well, because I'm not the part that it. might be illegal would be demanding money to stop doing it. Uh, that may or may not be some form of blackmail. I don't know. But it wouldn't matter for you. It's probably not against the law in Vietnam. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, I've, actually, Sammy, we, we have a tradition where every year on May Day, we play a video I made years ago about this same thing you're talking about, the history of May Day and such. So we will watch that in a bit. Blonde Panda sent a super sticker. Yes, I'm looking. That's, that, that's Matthias sent a super sticker before, which is oh, a Oh, Matthias, heart. thank you so much for the super sticker of a heart. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Here's a heart back to you I from think. our heart to your heart. Mm-hmm. I'm Please just, on your channel. I'm let's just, try to actually check stream elements today too, like so we don't miss them. Yeah, you do it. I have my stream elements. Comrade Internet, here's the dog. You ever seen so people? A, what? Unicorn. Oh, I love. I have a, a tattoo of a unicorn. I can't show it to you right now because of the shirt, but mm. it's right about where? Is it? Right here. Trust him. Yeah. 
There's a unicorn tattoo. I like I like unicorns. Everyone always asks, why do you have a unicorn tattoo? I said, because unicorns are they kick ass. And they told totally Why do you have to have a reason? Mm. I have a dolphin and a unicorn. Mm. There you go. All right. So um I like my dolphin tattoo because it's fierce. My unicorn's fierce too. Uh Overthrow Media says, Have you seen people dye hair designs with blood? No. Yeah. No. I have not seen that. How do you do that? Like a bruise? I don't really I don't get what that would wouldn't it wipe off? Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know how that would work. I'm trying to imagine that. We've got that bird. What are you gonna do for your birthday, Luna? Well, we're gonna stream. We're gonna hang out with y'all for two hours. I don't even know what I want for my birthday. Mao Zedong, I have not heard from Aaron of Education in a long time. I'll check in with him though. It's been a long oh, time yeah. since I've Aaron. We were going to do a collaboration a long time ago, and then we both had problems, and it fell through, and as far as I know, we both still want to do it, but just haven't had time. I mean, um, I did finish it up quite for your video or something. I know. That's a that's a burden that weighs on me, so we'll check out. We'll check that out. Am I going to get a narwhal in between them? No, I'm going to get a, a phoenix. So then if I get a phoenix, I'll have sea, land, and air. Maybe you should get the bird, you know, our civilization bird, the Bredex Phoenix. The Fung? Uh-uh, Bredex, uh, that. On the bronze drum. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I don't know if I have the, I don't have the, I haven't earned that. <laughs> I think that might be a little bit, I don't know. So anyway, um. We have a lot of stuff to go through. We're going to talk about May Day. We're going to talk about Vietnam Reunification Day. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? There's no charging in my computer. It's just strange. It must not be connected. Yeah, it's working now. Okay. And I have a lot of stuff from. Oh, oh, wait, quick, quick, before we go any farther, Luna, mm -hmm. we have to have. Wait a minute. This is really important. I forgot. Before the monarchy gets everyone, before the monarchy gets everyone, mm -hmm. we have to get our loyal breadcast subjects to pledge loyalty to breadcast. <laughs> let me let me set this up first, folks. Don't click away yet. Don't go anywhere yet. Because this is the thing. We're fighting a loyalty war mm -hmm. with the monarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, Luna had a viral tweet go off for the first time, probably since Musk, Musk took over. Yep. Yep. The first time you've broken uh 10k, let yep. alone it's now up to 22.8k. I'll, I'll share it on screen. Oh man, has it angered the whites? Oh my gosh. Luna has angered the whites because Luna I mean, has I just made that tweet. It was like, you know, it I was a shit post. It's a shit post. And it was intended to, well, because like I Luna and I, read a shit post. Luna's gotten kind of comfortable with like not having these because okay, up until Musk took over Twitter, <laughs> yes, like every tweet Luna made the was getting tweet. like thousands and thousands of tweets. Mm -hmm. Every like oh not I'm I'm exaggerating a little bit, yeah, but, but like no. basically every basically like Luna 70%. could tweet something and it was reliable that she'd get at least like a thousand tweets, right? Mm -hmm. And then Musk took over and janked the down to a hundred, turned it into the most the most obnoxious algorithm in the world where you have to be the kind of person that would pay for Twitter to get any algorithm love. Mm. So now it's just like the sea of blue checks with the worst imaginable takes. Um, so anyway, ever since Musk took over Twitter, Luna has been suppressed and we've kind of gotten comfortable with that where it's like, okay. No one we sees us. So yeah, we we'll just post so, posts. So Luna just makes these little shit posts. This is a shit post million. I mean, I guess maybe a hundred lies the most. <laughs> yeah. And God damn it. So here, okay, so here is <laughs> Luna's, <laughs> Luna's tweet. It just says, this is the kind of shit the West loves to pretend North Koreans have to do, but in real life. <laughs> and this is real. This is real, by the way. This is fucking real, man. This is the actual story we want to talk about. For the first time in history, millions across the country will be asked to make their promise to the king by saying the following out loud. I swear that I will pay true allegiance to your majesty and to your elves 
and successors according to law. So help me God. So um, <sighs> that's the loyalty oath that the king is now demanding. Yep. Which does, I mean, this is funny because it is the kind of thing that... Everybody's wishing happy birthday to me. Thank you. Somebody, that must be a raid. This has to be a raid. Right, right. Is it a raid? I can Somebody only, it's us? on Twitch. It's got to be a raid. Hi, everybody. Hi, raiders. Welcome, potential raiders. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um... So this is the so 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 anyway okay so this is Luna's viral tweet that has angered all the whites. Um, when I got my Canadian citizenship certificate in 2017, I had a loyalty oath to the Queen on the back. Cringe. That's high cringe. Yes, yes, yes it is. So anyway, um, feminist critique raid. Okay. Well, okay. Hello, welcome Hi feminist critique. Help, welcome feminist critics. Yes. I guess that's what I will call the feminist critics. critique fandom. <laughs> critics. Um, <laughs> Everyone hit refresh to make your view count. I don't really understand that. Yeah. Like, I, I know that that's true, I guess, because everyone says that all the time. Mm. But the fact that that is true is really annoying. It's like, why would Twitch set it up that way? Yeah. Why? Ding ass tweet. Like, why would you, why would you, why? They're watching the stream. Yeah. It makes no, it's a bad system. It sounds like a YouTube maneuver. It sounds mm -hmm. like something YouTube would do. Should we do an right. ad tech ad on Twitch too? Yeah, we'll do some anti, anti. Well, we already do a lot of complaining about Twitch, the white supremacist app that it is. Mm -hmm. But um, every time we talk about Twitch, we have to mention I that it's a white supremacist app. Word. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, I think what we need to focus on right now is the loyalty oath. The loyalty oath. We're yes. having a, lo a loyalty war with the monarchy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do exactly what the monarch did. I'm going to ask you all now to say this out loud. I swear that I will pay true allegiance to Breadcast mm -hmm. and to the heirs of Breadcasts and successors of Breadcasts according to the terms of service of Twitch, YouTube, and all other social media platforms in which we participate. So help me... Communism? I just heard Mario get a coin. Did you hear that? I just heard Mario get a coin. I did you not hear that? No. Did anybody hear that? No. Y'all. I heard the sound effect that it makes when Mario gets a coin. Like, very clearly. One time I went to a gas station, and the checkout sound when they would, like, ring something up on the point of sale was Sonic the Hedgehog getting a ring. And it, it, it was a gas station I went to frequently, and it took me, like, weeks to realize what it was because I knew it was familiar. And then when I realized what it was, it was just like haunting me. Okay. So everybody, I hope you've sworn allegiance to Breadcast. <laughs> oh, you're not going to say the oath, Eddie? You're not loyal? Oh, shit. This might be a problem. <laughs> Lasso in the chat. Oh, uh, folks. Satire. Satire. <laughs> I swear that I will pay true allegiance to Breadcast and all that other stuff you said. Brad. <laughs> Brad. Oh, we have uh, me, Brad. So anyway, all right. I don't know. That might not have worked. I thought we would get like an army. I thought everyone would rise up and, and swear loyalty to Breadcast. It's not easy to bring West Communists. I know. At all. Not easy at all. We've been really, we've been slacking on we've the We've been brain. through all of that. <laughs> you know, we've been all the brainwashing shit. What are you talking about? I, especially you, you know, living oh, in your country, yeah. your brainwash system, like, like, education system. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to push out the indoctrination that America and the UK and all these other. Western and once countries. you did it, you could never see you know like again. You know, that's really not true. A lot of people stop being you know like American nationalists and then just so join some other ridiculous cult. Oh gosh. So, Unfortunately, yeah, that's true. not true. I you mean, would think that that would be true. Yeah. You would think that that would be true, but that's not true. Eddie, okay, everyone, so you know, I'm joking. <laughs> we're not actually asking you to pledge loyalty to Breadcast. No, we don't. <laughs> that was a satire. Hey, Lost Sue is uh, over in Luna's channel. Welcome to Luna's channel. Hi. The true believers have risen. Yeah, we'll remember your loyalty, Blue Swallow. Don't 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 worry. 
<laughs> it's just a joke, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. it really was just a joke, bro. <laughs> We have to put that, you know, the slash J when we finish the joke. I can just put a banner up. Yeah, slash J. Oh, that's J. a good idea. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 one. yeah, yeah, do it. I'm going to make a slash J banner. I got to put it up high. Here. Is that how you do it? Mm -hmm. There. So from now on, when we're satirical, <laughs> we'll try to remember to put yeah, that up. This. <laughs> so for instance, um, I don't like Luna. Luna smells bad. I don't like you either. Oh. We have to be careful or the slash J banner could become very toxic. <laughs> we have to we have to use it with sobriety mm. and uh and and temperance. <laughs> Apparently there's also slash S slash S for sarcasm. But see what what we were doing with the loyalty oath wasn't really, I guess it was kind of sarcastic, but it was more satirical. We were satirizing the monarchy. Oh no, Yannick accidentally swore allegiance to regular sandwich bread. Oops. You made a mistake, Yannick. <laughs> Crap. Now you have to do whatever sandwich bread tells you to do. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, JK. I'm with Eddie. JK. All right, I'm changing our banner. Wait, wait, wait. This is old school. I like this because I'm I'm an internet boomer. <sighs> JK. Wait, 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 wait. I know. I'll 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 do it. JK and then I'll do a cry laugh emoji. Perfect. There. So now when you see <laughs> That's awesome. Such a boomer. <laughs> we have oh just, my god. We have just listen, we have just revolutionized streaming. Yeah, exactly. We have entered a whole new era of streaming. Exactly. <laughs> this what boomer means like like boom boomer cult in it. This is a boomer cult. <coughs> we have a teen cult and there must be a boomer cult. Of course. Is it gonna be like, you know, the 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 the, the boomer meme to the forward forward regarding <laughs> forward forward regarding Jokes, funny. <laughs> Please send to Jim. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Sean Meat said, "Now we uh, are talking." Talk. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Someone asked. <laughs> We're not talking. Your guy here, right on time. We haven't really talked about anything yet. Nope. Except that the the king is asking all British, all loyal royal subjects to swear an oath uh... of loyalty. And Lord, Which oh we'll, Lord. we'll pop that up on screen I one more time. I triggered a lot of whiteies. So, um, look, for the first time in history, millions of okay. So this is what this is what we were talking about. This is an actual true story. The king is asking loyal subjects to swear out loud. I swear that I would pay true allegiance to your Majesty and to your heirs and successes according to law. So me gold. So anyway, it's cringe. We were laughing about it. We made some jokes. That's it. That's all you missed. Save versus capitalism. Thank you, Super Chances. Did you hear about Wizard of the Coast getting the Pinkerton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this. Getting the Pinkertons to try to raid a house of the Magic Gathering cards. Uh, Wizard of the Coast sent them back. So let me tell you the story. Wizards of the Coast is a pretty massive company that owns Magic the Gathering and various other game properties. Mm -hmm. They accidentally sent this dude a box of cards that were like not pre production or something. They were like not met ready for, for the public yet. But they sent them to this guy. So he like basically opened the box and took pictures of them and put them on the internet. You know, like leaked it basically. But it wasn't like he didn't do anything. They sent them. Imagine someone sends you a box of cool stuff and you're yeah. like, wow, I got this cool box in the mail. Yeah. So what did the Wizards of the Coast do? Instead of like calling him on the phone and asking him to mail it back or do something that normal yeah. people would do, yeah. they hired the pinkertons the old nemesis of the working class the mercenaries and spies class traders They're real this really? is true they, the, they these are professional like merc like yes. a mercenary private i know security I know force Pinkertons. they yes. hired them to go and recover the box of cards card video like like uh, not video game game cards like like 
playing cards. It, it's mind boggling. And it, 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 I, can't, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, that's absurd. Like, who does that? That's like, what is it? It's like, it, it makes you imagine that whoever's in charge of Wizard of the Coast is like sitting at the top of some skyscraper, like petting a cat, like, unleash the Pinkertons. We must recover the cause. It's like, what is wrong with these people? This is a true story. That's, that's isn't that a wild story? Uh. All right, so um, <laughs> put an entire border around the entire screen to indicate the sense in which you are making comments. I mean, that would actually be really fun. Mm -hmm. I would, I would love to graphic design those. I think I might start making emote borders. Mm -hmm. This will be the new Twitch thing. Mm -hmm. Emote borders. Mm -hmm. I'm on it. All right, people also say Mayday when the military plane goes down. Well. That was intentional. The title of the stream was, in t was a double entendre as the, as the symbolic plane of the American empire is going down. Mayday. We shout, mayday, mayday, mayday. It means, A, we're in crisis. This shit's crashing. It also means, B, the solution is mayday. communism, which, which is represented by mayday. Yeah, the third is, this is my birthday. The third is that it's Luna's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a triple entendre. A triple entendre. It's like, oh no, this plane is crashing. We need communism to fix it. Happy birthday, Luna. <laughs> That's the situation we're in. Mm -hmm. All summarized by Mayday, Mayday. That's why it's Mayday, Mayday, Mayday three times oh. for each entendre. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm just catching up with the comments here. Man, man buys cards through ordinary means, gets fucking mercenaries sent after him. Uh, so anyway, all right. Remember the Pinkertons? Well, they're back. They actually were. Here's the thing, though. Don't forget this. This is, a, this is an important piece of Pinkerton history. They were involved with the Black Lives Matter situation, if you'll remember. Uh, the, uh, the George Floyd uprisings. A Pinkerton shot somebody during the George Floyd uprising because mm -hmm. um, the Pinkertons were being used to protect uh, journalists and various other people. And I would suspect, even though I cannot prove that they were also used in various other kind of black ops capacities. Like I say black ops, I just mean like private because, you know, because during the George Floyd uprisings and in the remember the flash robberies that were happening uh, a year or two ago, the Pinkertons, I believe, were involved with that. They were definitely using private security companies to secure public areas. Like there were cities in California, cities, not companies, cities, that were hiring private security companies like the Pinkertons to do like basically police work. No one remembers that. I remember. I want to do, okay, here's a project I want to do, Luna. I haven't talked to you about this. Mm -hmm. It would be a grueling project, mm -hmm. but the, um, the cops did so many atrocities. We saw it happen yeah. in 2020. Mm -hmm. Thousands of atrocities. Yes. And we all watched it. There's video footage of it. And it's like society has just like, and I know that the people watching this haven't forgotten, but the variety, the, the majority of society has just forgotten that this happened. Yeah. Now they will talk about how Antifa did this and Antifa did that yes. constantly. But it's like no one talks anymore, especially in the press about all we saw it happen I, as it was happening i was thinking the whole time this is it like there's no way that they can say the police aren't brutal from now on because there's so much documentation but there's not like so someone needs to make a documentary or something that just shows i mean really just shows the and it would be a horrible horrible thing to have to do but just documenting all this violence and what happened like how many of these cops actually ever had any repercussions is anyone keeping track of that I've kind of Googled around on it I, and I've talked to my friends that are activists and stuff and I can't find any, I can't find anybody that's doing that work. So, um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they intentionally want us to forget about it. 
Of course, of course. That's why I'm saying we need to be like documenting this and making mm -hmm. people like demand, like forcing people to remember mm -hmm. that all this stuff happened. And I don't know what the best way to do that is, but it's just wild. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, instead of keeping track of all the of all the police brutality, they have cop like reality shows. Yeah, Cobra Commander makes the point that a toy company hired mercenaries to go harass somebody. <clears throat> I mean, you know, what does it, what do you normally do? Cause they goofed wizards of the coast goofed. Like, wouldn't you just be like, Hey, Hey, sorry. We sent you those cards by accident. Can you send them back? And by the way, we'll send you like a thousand dollars in free products. You know, yeah. sorry for the inconvenience. Sorry that we inconvenienced you yeah. by making a mistake and sending Instead of spending money to hide little Pinkertons. Like it's absolutely God, wild. Geez, this could have please. been, it could have been a, a, a it's like a, a oops we goofed and like here's a little photo opportunity here's a little puff piece like this is just i mean even like, even within their own like capitalist framework give this them is, at least a free gift and then just let them pick one and then send back the box jeez louise D do like <clears throat> like normal human beings <clears throat> are doing the video game says it's so hard to remember all the terrible things that have occurred there must be some recorders of events that actually matter to the working class rather than x famous couple broke up or whatever bourgeois press covers yeah exactly i mean we need i don't care but here's the thing i know for a fact if I put one, literally one, count them one instance of police brutality in a YouTube video, it gets the worst suppression YouTube yep. can muster, which is age restriction. Mm -hmm. It gets shadow banned. Yes. And they'll demonetize it and they'll do everything else they can. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about monetization, we don't care about the ad revenue. We, the reason monetization matters for YouTube videos is because if your video is not monetized, See, oh, our internet just dropped. We just talk about it. Our internet just dropped. So we're probably potatoing out right now. Oh, Doug, Doug. Uh, refresh it because, you know, the internet's still high, but your browser just, like, sync it up. All right, we'll be right one second. Yeah, we we're back. go. We're back. All right. <clears throat> It's excessive force even by capital standards, yes. I mean, that's what I was trying to say, yes. So, um, <clears throat> so we just need, I don't know. I, I mean, we need people to like stand up and say like 2020 happened and there were thou, I mean, do you remember? I mean, I just, I have all these images stuck like burned into my memory of the police, like bashing that one camera guy with a shield, a round shield. Um, pepper spraying people that were like trapped, yeah. like draw, like tear gassing and, yes. and, and and pepper spraying people that were trapped and couldn't get out exactly. and couldn't go anywhere. And then the old man tear gassing that little street. girl. So, yeah, throwing that old man on the ground. I mean, there's yes. so many countless, countless. Man. I mean, it happened. The journalist got shot in the eye. Yeah, with the with the can of, uh, I believe it was a tear gas can. Yeah. Photojournalist. Yes, and she lost, and her, lost eye her eye forever. <clears throat> so... Yeah, just, I mean, I guess my point is just, I hope you all remember that stuff and keep reminding people because it seems like it's been forgotten. And now with like Stop Cop City, hashtag Stop Cop City in Atlanta, there's the, the, the discourse is not talking about the fact that, I mean, I know that we are the, the, the anti, the Stop Cop City folks are talking about it, but like the media isn't talking about the fact that they're literally training cops to like be more aggressive. The whole point of Cop City is to make, you know, riot suppression, which is just, you know, it's really just resistance yep movement suppression mm -hmm. uh, anyway y'all know all this it's but. gonna be like international you know training like facility for cops all over the world wait here's an here's a story we should read from panet rosa <clears throat> while we're on the subject of um the brutality of capitalism Oh my gosh. All right, this is a little rough, folks. I've, I've never heard this story before. Yeah, Overthrow Media says it's been like that even in Standing Rock. The people they blew people's arms off with water cannons. Yeah, I mean, it goes this goes back mm -hmm. to I mean, this goes back to May Day. This goes back to, to the Haymarket massacre. Yeah. I mean, this goes back like this is obviously nothing new. Mm -hmm. But what's a little bit different is that. The reason I think that we should document all this stuff from 2020 is that we, it was like on camera, you know, like we have footage.
footage of it. It's undeniable. There's no the, – the cop cars crashing into crowds of people. Yeah. Every time they talk about the cops on the news, if there was actually neutral journalism, mm. if there was actually anything approaching neutral journalism or like showing all sides of the story or whatever they claim to do, then every time they would talk about the police, they would show footage of like the cop cars driving into crowds and they would show that they would show that footage. Mm. They wouldn't just take press releases from the cops and just publish it like they do. They would talk about all the people whose lives have been destroyed by cops, especially in 2020. Imagine if one of that those video actually happened in Vietnam or China. Oh, La Su says land back now. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's how is that even controversial with, with, how with is revolutionaries? That, even controversial? that is what I do not get even to this day. Because How people have been so imperialism pilled that they don't even realize that they're being. Ah, it's impossible. Let's get it in the chat, folks. Land back now. Exactly. Okay. I mean. You got it. It's, we got it going it's, on. It's sad. It's fucking sad. Um, and a lot of people, like, you know, like, even in my uh, last mooncast too or something, somebody gave us a super chat and gave me a super chat and asked me like, are there any like Vietnamese indigenous people, you know? And I was like, thank you for your super chat. But I mean, lots of people do forget that we are indigenous people. Where we are right now in Tai Hoa, <laughs> okay? I am indigenous to Vietnam. Where we are in Tai Hoa right now, the um, Vietnamese have been here for, like Luna's, basically Luna's people, Community. Luna's ancestors have been uh, here for 6,000 years. years and we we at had, least we had a civilization that was one of the four first civilization of southeast asia that formed vietnam today so you know i am indigenous my family is indigenous <clears throat> yeah. and this vietnam is the when what happened when you know you actually put indigenous people in charge of our own land and our own people that's yeah. what you get we got it going on in the chat there are obviously cops still attacking protesters today. Yes, I know. Yep. They opening a new Cheney facility to change more of them. Yeah. With with bombs and machine with guns, bombs by the way. And tanks. So if you don't know what we're talking about, go check out my Stop Cop City mm -hmm. interview that I did mm -hmm. on my channel, youtube.com slash non compete. N O N C O M P E T. Um Okay. Let's uh let's check out this article that Panet Rosa sent us. This sounds a little bit grisly, so content warning. Frito Lay had workers move the dead body of a coworker and keep working, claim striking employee. Oh my gosh. When I first met with the workers striking at Frito Lay Topeka, Kansas production facility, I was told that it was hard for them to even explain how bad the situation was for employees. They had gone without any real increase in pay, and the work shifts of over 80 hours per week are tearing them apart. Speaking to Mark McCarter, a union steward at Frito Lay, I was informed that even someone with a long history at the company could not count on the company rewarding his years of service. With his wife passing away, he informed the company that he just couldn't work the same 12 hour a day shifts. He was told to just file an FMLA. Seven years later, nothing has changed and he's still assigned the same hours. Wow, man, seven years later. That's incredible. In an editorial within the Topeka Capital Journal, the agony of the workers at Frito-Lay reminds us of exactly how important unions are to the safety and protection of American workers. Which, by the way, <clears throat> uh, let's all remember that Joe Biden, since his picture just popped up, is a union buster who went against the striking rail workers whose demands would have materially prevented the chemical spill train derailment incident that happened like two months later. So... The Democrats obviously are not on the side of unions. By the way, did you see the clapback from our comrade who, oh, what is it? Aaron Smalls? Is that his name? Something Smalls. Uh, our comrade who worked at the with the Amazon, Christian Smalls, Christian Smalls. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> <coughs> Here we go. I found it. Wait a minute. No, I didn't find it. Anyway, Christian Smalls is a, is a, is a comrade who helped to unionize Amazon, and he has a pretty high profile for that um, after getting fired from Amazon. And um, Christian Smalls 
like like Biden made a tweet that was something like, oh, I'm so pro-union. Look how pro-union I am. And Christian Smalls was like, that's Cap. You invited us to the White House and just gave us a flyer and have ignored us ever since you got your photo opportunity. Hmm. So anyway, I, th I thought that was interesting. Maybe somebody in the chat can find that link. But anyway, OK. Um, oh, yeah. And Chris Smalls went to Cuba recently, which I think is cool. Um, so anyway. Um, all right, I digress. Let's go back to the article. The list of problems with Frito-Lay are jarring, terrifying, and reflect what can happen in a company hell-bent on profit and the belief that Wall Street, which is every company, by the way. Find me a company, find me a capitalist corporation that's not hell-bent on profit. That's the purpose of, the of a corporation. The whole purpose and type was the existence. And the belief that Wall Street matters far more than your home street or hometown. Again, every corporation, every capitalist entity has to be like that or they will fail that's how capitalism works i won't list all the article all of the article author in form of free to lay everybody's but some are. i don't i think this is a typo or something i won't list all of the i guess problems they claim but some are especially galling during the covid 19 lockdown a co-worker's father passed away in another state you told her since there wasn't a funeral she didn't qualify for bereavement time <laughs> because of COVID. Yeah. There was no phone funeral because of COVID. She had to take off two of her own days to grieve. Frito-Lay responded to this claim, but in responding to the worker, they noted that there were two, not one, deaths on the production line in Topeka in the last five years. The decision to also only address the last five years represents a cutoff, which means we don't know what happened before those five years. This doesn't sound like a great public relations strategy. Listen to this. This is from Frito-Lay directly. In the event of an incident that necessitates medical attention, Work ceases and the area is cleared for the safety of the individual requiring medical attention and the other employees at the site. While it's unclear what incident the associate is referencing in the op-ed, we are aware of only two instances in the last five years in which the individual has experienced a medical emergency at the plant that unfortunately resulted in that individual passing away. That is such like equivocating language. Yeah, right. Unfortunately. Oh, sorry. Our worker just experienced a medical emergency at the plant that unfortunately resulted in them passing away. It's like, no, they fucking died on the job. Okay. Stop with the doctrinal language. In both cases, medical attention was initially provided at the plant and work ceased until the associates were safety, safely on the way to the hospital. Well, so great that you, you put their dead body in an ambulance to send them to the hospital. You still need to shut everything down until you are absolutely sure, which means, you know, usually having like safety meetings and all kinds of like lessons learn meetings and stuff to make sure it's not going to happen again mm -hmm. analysis you don't just get right back to work after someone fucking dies on the floor jesus christ the list is detailed in her and they editorial. just make fucking potato chips i know they make money so so let's fucking remember luna potato chip coming. no listen this is important I'm, I, I'm not joking we have to remember there's a few things at play here fetishization of labor fetishization of commodities mm -hmm. with labor being a commodity and uh the mcm circulation mm -hmm. the frito lays people would say that they're feeding the people and providing products that people enjoy but no they're just making money they buy labor right they rent labor from people which mm -hmm. which really what they're doing is they are renting out the means of production to mm -hmm. workers right so in other words they're commoditizing labor so that they can make potato chips so that they can sell the potato chips and make money they don't care about the potato chips. They don't care about the ingredients. They don't care about, they, they only care to the extent to which they can make more money. They don't care about you. They don't care about their consumers. They don't care about their workers, obviously. <laughs> um, the, it, it's the MCM mode of circulation, which means, okay, you and I, right? Mm -hmm. Most people in the world, workers, the proletariat, you sell a commodity to get money so you can buy other commodities. That's the CMC mode of circulation. I know this sounds wonky and boring, but it's really important to try to understand one of the big differences between the working class and the capitalist class, right? You sell your labor, a commodity, so that you can get money, right? That's what having a job is. That's what wages are. You sell your labor so that you can get money so that you can buy the stuff you need to live. That is the CMC mode of circul circulation, okay? The capitalists, they don't care about the commodities. They only care about making money. That's called fetishization of commodities. So like they can be selling bolts or potato chips or whatever they don't care and so that's so they invest money into commodities like labor 
and resources so that they can make more money. MCM Prime. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the deal here. Frito Lays is just buying these workers up as wage servants mm -hmm. so that they can make money. And that's all they care about. So when a worker dies on the plant floor, this is why I've talked about all that stuff. They're so alienated from that worker and from that worker's labor and from that worker's family. They're completely alienated from it because the worker for them is just a means for making more money. Mm -hmm. So when that worker, when that human being dies, their sole concern is getting back to production so they can make more money, yeah. replacing that worker as quickly as possible and getting shit going so they can roll out those potato chips so they can sell them and make more money. That's all that they corporate entity can care about. If they're not that ruthless, this is very important for you all to understand. And I say this as somebody who used to aspire to be a capitalist myself and ran several businesses for over a decade. Mm -hmm. If you're not that ruthless as a capitalist or a wannabe survive. capitalist, hmm. you will not survive. Yep. Someone else will eat your eat, lunch, exactly. as, as they say. Or someone else will eat you up. Eat your Put you out of business. Mm -hmm. Because the sole motivator under capitalism is the profit motive. That's all there is. Mm. There's a great documentary that I watched well over a decade ago. It's called The Corporation. And it talks about how corporations only exist to make money. And that's all that they can do by design. That's what they're for. If they don't, if you're a CEO and you're not hyper-focused on making money, guess what? You get voted out by the board. <laughs> they want that money. That's all they care about. That's why they bought your stock. Mm -hmm. That's why they invest in your company. By the way, I like how people say that um, stock ownership means that capitalism is like truly democratic. Oh my no. Gosh. Let me explain why that's not true. Because you know, there's tremendous wealth wealth inequality in the world, right? Like we all know that, right? Like you've seen the graph where like, all right, try to wrap your head around how much a billion dollars is, right? Hold on. Here, I'm going to show you this. There's this great, here, 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 here. I've got, I found, I found the image. This is a divergence, but I think it's worth looking at. What the hell is this resolution? Oh my God. You click to the main link. I already lost the main link. Hold on. Yeah. Nothing shifty. I know, I know. I just got to find it again. Here, here, here. I found a global income distribution. All right. All right. So here we go. Look at the, look at this. So we already know this. We already know that there's like extreme wealth inequality in the world, right? Okay. So like, this is the uh, percentage of individual income versus percentile of world population. So like, this is the world poverty line or the US poverty line, the US poverty line. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as like how cash money is distributed in the world, we know that there's massive wealth inequality. I mean, this very tiny fraction of society mm -hmm. possesses way more cash than hmm. like the vast majority of workers who have way, way, way less cash. Right. Mm -hmm. We know that as far as money goes. Now that inequality with stock ownership is like, far worse in other words way fewer people own stocks yeah and the people that do own stocks like like the extremely wealthy people own the vast majority of stocks mm. so the whole idea that like oh anyone everyone has stocks in their 401k and blah 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 blah, which is pe what people say to try to say that capitalism is democratic mm. it's bullshit because there's way more in wealth inequality with stock ownership than there is with cash ownership yeah so in other words uh i don't want to hear that bullshit argument <laughs> But where was I going with that? The point is that um, corporations are, are ruthless. They only care about making money. That's all they can care about. That's all the stock owners care about. And those are the people that control the planet. So. Um, the stock market is an opponent process market that goes against the working class economy. That's an interesting way of looking at that. I'd never heard it put that way before, but that's an interesting way of looking at it. 
I mean, in the in the, the the instances where the market does interface with the working class, right? So there are some higher, more, I guess you could say like, uh, you know, especially, okay, it's used for the bourgeoisization of the proletariat in some instances, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people do get 401ks or they get stock options with their companies or whatever, right? And that's used to basically um, swindle the working class into working against their own interests and to working into the, in, in, in the interests of capital. That's why so many like labor aristocracy types or whatever you want to call it, like tech workers and that sort of thing. Um, what Marx and Engels called the bourgeois proletariat. That is to say the elements of the proletariat whose interests align more with the proletariat than with the working class, mm -hmm. at least through false consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, they get, you know, they're the kinds of people that like, they get really upset when line goes down because their 401k loses value. You know, their, their stocks go down. And, and that's just a vehicle for dividing the working class. Because now you've got all these people that are like, Oh, my portfolio is down. You know, I want Wall Street to do better. I'm on the side of the capitalists. Mm -hmm. I'm working against my fellow workers now. I'm a class trader now mm -hmm. because I got a 401k. And there are a lot of workers like that. I mean, it's obviously not even close to the majority of workers, mm -hmm. but it's enough that like the kinds of workers that have a lot of visibility mm -hmm. and that have the resources that the working class needs, you know, like a little mm -hmm. extra cash and that sort of thing, those tend to be bourgeois proletariat in the West. Did that make sense? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and yeah, the, this is absolutely true. The capitalist class manipulates the market in many ways and plan their fortunes around that. For sure. When you invest in the stock market as like a little individual person, you're literally, and this is something that they've been doing since the 19th century. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but there's a guy in the twenties who was a stock a trader, right? What's that guy's name? Maybe someone in the chat will know. And um, he wrote a book that was all about all the different ways that um, wealthy people manipulate stock markets. And they have this, it's like this pattern that they do where they, they get a bunch of people to invest in stocks and then they rug pull them and they just do this over and over again. And they've been doing it since like at least the 1920s that it's been documented. So yeah. So if you, if you're like a day trader and you think that you're like, playing the system. No, you're, they're playing you. Maybe you're temporarily benefiting from it, but like any element of the working class that tries to take the side of the capitalist class, you will get quashed eventually and suppressed back down. Just look at tech workers today. Tech workers are starting to feel the pressure and starting to, I mean, I think in the next few years, we'll see them push back down from their lofty labor aristocracy position position so that's why if you're a tech person and you're doing well right now if you're watching this right now strongly to encourage you to start forming a union building class consciousness building solidarity with workers who are in less lucrative career fields than you because it's only a matter of time it's happened again and again and again i mean there wasn't too long ago in the usa that factory workers were the labor aristocracy and you could work in a factory and you can have a house and raise a family and stuff. Now look at what's happened. Now look at what's happened to these Frito lay workers. That's going to be your, your group it, sooner or later. Your time will come when capital will discard you because they'll find a better way to make money. Learn to code didn't work. It works until it doesn't, you know, the, the, the capital. And by the way, you know, who was it that pushed STEM and learned to code and all that stuff? It was capitalists who at the time had a need for coders. Now chat GPT is coming along. Let's see what happens next. Um, man, it's hard for me to talk without Luna here. I guess I'll just go through the chats a little bit. I haven't really been paying too much attention to the chat. Everything, yeah. This is talking about Dorian's talking about how housing is commodified in in the USA. Everything is commodified, but the fact that housing is so commodified and has not just commodified, but has become a speculation vehicle. I mean, I yeah. I mean, it's always been a speculation vehicle, but like 
there's this great uh, YouTube video. I'm just going to share it for now. I really want to watch it on stream one day. There's just always so much stuff going on. But um, if I can find this. Here we go. It's called Why New York's Billionaire's Row is Half Empty. I think it's a 30 minute long video. So we'd really have to like dedicate a whole stream to watching it because we'd want to stop and comment and stuff. But it's such a good video. I, I, I encourage people to watch it all the time. It really shows you how speculative real estate has, has just reached this like absurd peak in the USA. They're building skyscrapers in New York City now from the ground up strictly as speculative investments. In other words, not as homes for people to live in, not even as offices for people to work in, but as assets to be held on to as a, as a store of wealth and as a, as a investment. And, and it's literally embedded. That's, that's the DNA for the architecture of these buildings. So it's very, very fascinating video. Definitely recommend you give it a watch. Uh, I'm going to start going to our planned topics now. Let me check, check through our notifications. We're good here, good here. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's cleanse our palate. I want Luna to see this, though. So wait. Well, I guess we'll have to wait for Luna to get back. But I have a palate cleansing video we can watch as soon as Luna returns. It's um, AI Nightmare Fuel, one of my favorite new categories of content. Anybody? Hold on. Check in the chat here. Crazy how many incentives there are for capitalism to engage in antisocial behavior. Well, that's, yeah, because capital, capitalism is antisocial. It, capitalism is so antisocial that it denies the social nature of humanity. It, it fetishizes the individual and it mythologizes the individual and it presupposes that the individual can exist separate and independent and cut off and metaphysically distinct from society. And this is why it's very important for, I believe, I'll beat the drum every single week. It's very important for us to understand the philosophy of dialectical materialism because dialectical materialism's one of its first principles, one of its foundational principles is that everything is connected. The individual is defined by its relationship with society. So in Diamat, which is a universal system of philosophy, everything is defined by internal external relationships which guide which which drive development okay so in diamat the individual is defined by yes internal relations such as internal thoughts and body processes and that sort of thing but perhaps more importantly external relationships with our fellow human beings with nature with our environment right so these are the things that define a human being you are nothing cut off from society you know like if we take you and lock you in a or even if you just sit you out into the forest with no resources how long would you last I, you know you watch all these homesteading videos right there's this whole big and, and it's starting to infect the, the the left by the way right this whole like homesteading off the grid thing which that's fine like i don't care if that's your lifestyle that's not what i'm talking about I'm talking about it politically as a, as a movement, as like a social movement. There are all these people that are like going out and building cabins in the woods and they're saying, oh, I live off the grid. I'm self-reliant. I rely on myself. And then they're using like a chainsaw, which was built in a factory by Still workers. Car. They're driving cars. They're using gasoline. Mm -hmm. They're using the internet. Mm -hmm. They're using all these things that like it takes millions of people working and together to build and, and maintain. Yeah. So don't tell me you're self-reliant if you use technology and equipment and materials that are sourced from this global production chain that we have mm -hmm. in this in the decades and decades of history of development of technology which your fellow humans have collaborated to achieve anyway 
I diverge. Mm-hmm. I digress. <clears throat> the off the grid industrial complex fucking sucks. Not only does it suck, but again, I want to say this again, it's infecting the left. And I'm seeing a lot of people on the left that are like, oh, we all just, it's, it's like this Neo Jeffersonian idea. Like, oh, every leftist just needs to go off and start a little homestead farm. And that's the solution. It's like, no, no, that's not a solution. That is individualist lifestyleism. It's Jeffersonianism. Exactly. It's also just utopianism. And it's also false consciousness because you're not actually off the grid. You still need a society. You're on the grid. If you have ever, if you use an ounce of gasoline, <laughs> if you use the internet, you're on the grid, accept it. You're a social being. You need a community to live in, okay? Absolutely. And then there are people like me who need a community to survive because Dude, we need, need medicine. Dude, I need classes for my fucking eyes. I, know. I cannot live off the grid. Come on. Uh, BP says, I mined the metal, built the car, drilled the gas, built my phone. I read it. Okay. I read an article one time and this guy was like, what is the most... Oh, there's two articles I read. Okay. Mm-hmm. First one was... What is the most technologically advanced thing that a person could go into the woods with nothing and build by themselves? And he figured it was a telegraph line. Telegraph, like where you have a a wire and it's like, like that, right? So he thought if I could go to a place that has copper in the ground, I could get enough copper to make wire to make a telegraph. And I could make that with no, Mm -hmm. from tools that I make in nature, right? Mm -hmm. And he failed. Couldn't do it. And then there was another guy that was like, I want to make a toaster by myself okay where he's like i'll f- i will secure the copper i will I-, I think this guy might have even been like using tools that he bought at the store <laughs> but he was like i'm just gonna make a toaster by myself i'm, I'm gonna get some copper and some steel and some aluminum i'm gonna make a toaster and like he mm. couldn't do it mm. and i think that guy was an engineer I-, I if somebody knows that article i'm talking about i'd love to find it again but yeah it's like yeah you're lucky if you can make a fire by yourself exactly in a lucky day in a dry day and I know there's a lot of YouTube channels where people go out and they make like, they, they call it bushcraft. Mm. And I know I like watching those videos. I do. It's fine. It's enjoyable. Mm. And it's like the kind of thing I would like to do mm. where you go out and you like try to make a fire and you try to make tools by yourself out of wood and stuff. But it's like, mm. at the end of the day, that's a hobby. Mm-hmm. You're not living that way, buddy. Mm-hmm. None of us are. And if you were living that way, guess what? It's miserable. <laughs> and at some point you're going to like break your ankle and something and you're dead. Yep. And you're going to need like medical emergency or something. So anyway, um, just hate to see that attitude infecting the left. It's like very, very obnoxious. All right, Luna, let's mm-hmm. cleanse our palate now. Mm-hmm. I have something I want to show you. Mm-hmm. Now, I got a lot to say about this, I guess, but I, maybe I don't. I don't know. But let's just watch it together. I'm not going to play the audio because it's copyright. It's just all it is is Smash Mouth by All Star. So imagine Smash Mouth playing Smash Mouth playing as we watch this AI beer ad, AI generated beer ad, okay? What do you think, Luna? <laughs> Just looked over Luna's face. What the fuck does this one have to in? It's an AI generated beer ad. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is all oh AI generated. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, it's great. Um, so here's where we are with the state of AI. It's almost, you can't tell that it's not real, right? It's so realistic. Yeah. What are, I mean, my brain just like, I'm trying to, you know, like, Getting triggered yeah. by that, like uh, I like I like this guy the most the um the dead hands uh, the dead hands in a vat oh bong. Oh my gosh! He's smoking a dead hands in a vat bong. Um, I really don't have anything to say about this except that um, it's horrible. Yes. Yeah. Uncanny Valley. Yep. Yeah. BP says the fingers are always the tell. It's funny because yeah. this isn't that how they used to tell it like. Like in folklore, I feel like this is like a thing from like Irish folklore or something. Like you could tell somebody's a fairy pretending to be a human by counting their teeth and their fingers or something. Mm. I don't know. Am I making that up, folks? But it's like, 
I don't know. It is nightmare fuel. But it's, you know, it's going to be a few years and then and you're, and they're, and you're not going to be able to sell. And that's what's really... When worrying. finally they learn how to work on the hands, that's when we are totally fucked. Well, I think that the photo generation generated AI already has fixed the hand problem to, to great extent. Oh, shit. <laughs> Matthew says you called that eye bleach, but that was anything but. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's like, I, I, we're not ready for this. My only take on this is that we are collectively as a civilization, as a, as a species, not ready for this technology. Because right now it's cringe and funny to laugh at, and there's a guy smoking a dead hand bong, mm. dead hand beer bong. Dead hand beer bong would be a good name for a band, by the way. Yeah, dead hand beer bong. Or a good name for a pirate. <laughs> Arr, I'm dead hand beer bong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Recenter. Focus. Mm. Right now, the technology is laughable, but it's not going to be that long before it starts causing political problems, for one thing. Because we're not going to... Look, the, the information, the, the misinformation space is already so... It's so easy to convince people of lies already. And you don't have to have evidence. But like once you can create really convincing AI photos and videos and sound recordings and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the damage that's going to do because people already believe absurd things yep. that make absolutely no sense. We know from being living through COVID in Vietnam where we would go out, we'd look at the street, it would be quiet and calm. There would be not a soul in sight in a major city like Da Nang. Then we would go read the news from the West and it would say, there's a, a there are secret agent cops on every corner in Da Nang right now enforcing the horrible uh, authoritarian COVID measures in Da Nang. And then we're looking around, we're like, what the fuck are they talking about? We haven't seen cops in like two years for two we're years. Seeing, yeah, I know. We're seeing with our own eyes that this is not true. Or or like some guy will write an article and say like, look at this. Look at this. Uh, uh, what did he call them? Like government agent or something like that. The, but it was like, this the, wooden. it's like a parking guy. He's yeah, like a parking, parking guy wearing like a security uniform. Yeah. It's so like, anyway. We believe here, dude. But then when we speak but, up the truth, people attack me for being, you well, know. Well, but here's the thing, though. <sighs> people people believe that because they want to believe it, because they're conditioned to believe it, because everything that they've ever known about. It matches the, with you, with it, their worldview. With their, yeah, with their worldview and their preconceived notions. And that's been, that's been indoctrinated into them. Mm. Well, once the... Once they start being able to just generate whatever imagery they want, mm -hmm. it's going to be even more easier for more easy for people to believe even more outrageous lies, yeah. right? And it's going to be harder to convince people of the truth. There's just going to be back to the to the blast origin to the king in the U in the, in the UK, you know, because like it is absurd. It is extremely absurd, especially in 2023, and you still have freaking royal family that you like like to, to take a lot of money away from you and you have to swear the allegiance to that family but then when we point out how ridiculous it is we got attacked too because again we attack you're challenging something. you're challenging the yes. worldview that's Ex been ingrained into them their whole lives exactly that's what it is EJ, uh uh bp says that we're ai gen we are ai generated oh the hand thing this is all wrong luna put your hands down they're gonna catch us don't turn on your teeth. Mm. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Redcast. I'm Ian Hi, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a I'm a real human, and I love doing human things. All right, here, or she told us all her. <laughs> <laughs> we just invented a new terrible form of comedy, <laughs> which is humans pretending to be AI pretending to be humans. Yep. <laughs> um. All right. There are two AI Twitch channels. All right, so let me tell you this. This is funny. Oh, we got super chats. Or we got a super chat. Um, Lude. Hold on. Mm. Before we go to the super chat, um, there's this one AI Twitch channel 
and it's I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's like a Seinfeld thing. It's an AI generated Seinfeld. So AI generates a Seinfeld script. It's like it loops continuously forever. I think it's called Nothing Forever or something because Seinfeld was a show about nothing. But then they have like these Seinfeld standing characters. There's like, you know, a Jerry and Elaine, a George, a Kramer. That might be it. I don't know. But they um, they just endlessly, endlessly have these like AI generated uh, Seinfeld episodes. Mm. First of all, it got banned from Twitch at one point. I don't know if it's, right. I don't even know if it's back up uh -huh. for being transphobic, which yep. is like, that tells you something about the technology right yeah. there, mm. right? First of all, to get banned from Twitch for being transphobic, you have to do something pretty bad because Twitch doesn't give a shit about trans people really. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, like the, the, the fact that there's so much bigotry already embedded into this technology, despite all the human labor hours they put in trying to like, mm -hmm. or claim that they try to get rid of it, it just shows how not prepared we are for this technology okay but all that being said if you watch the show you know it can be kind of funny but it gets way more funny when you realize this is the kicker about the seinfeld thing the people that make it are serious and they really think that in you know a couple of years time that will be the kind of entertainment that everyone prefers is AI generated, like completely AI generated. Right now, the writers are going on strike mm. or are, are, are talking about going on strike in Hollywood because one of their demands is that they don't want AI involved in the writing process at all. So that's going to be an interesting battle to watch. Um, Andy Ludd says, thank you for the super chat, by the way, it says um, between office drone and total off grid, I think there are liberatory towards the latter. If it is a social movement, ran prayer wrote about this um that seems like a false dichotomy to me though i don't i mean i don't know why you would have to choose between being an office drone and being off the grid first of all mm. and second of all you can't be off the grid it's impossible like you can't you can be i mean yeah of course we need to like make technology more materialistically it's impossible yeah like humanity is a grid, society is a yeah, grid. Yeah, the humanity has developed to a point that you cannot leave off the grid. It's also kind of like, I don't know, the thing that I don't like about that kind of idea is it, it feels like utopian. It's like the first thing we have to do is get rid of capitalism. And then we, and then we can make these like grander decisions about what kind of society we're going to have. Mm -hmm. But like at this point, how do I know? Maybe it's completely possible to have a city with a billion people in it post-capitalism or maybe it's impossible mm -hmm. maybe we all decide that we don't like cities i don't know you know what i'm saying but that's that's so far ahead of where we are right now we, we're not even close to making those kinds of decisions mm -hmm. so i don't know i mean that's how i feel about it and by the way i can't live off the grid i will die i need medicine i need glasses <laughs> i need thyroid medicine to be alive so I, I either need glasses or eye surgery, which is both cannot be off grid at all. Funny enough, to video games, um, man, sorry for digressing everybody into this nerd hole for a second, but the Butlerian Jihad did not begin because of uh, reactionary AI. It began because fascist humans reprogrammed AI um. to enslave humanity on their behalf but then they lost control of it. Mm. So they basically AI was all fine and chill for centuries, but then these fascist humans were like, humanity is getting weak and soft. We have to mix things up. So they reprogrammed AI to like help them take over humanity and build a fascist empire. And then they lost control and they like kind of programmed the AI to be fascistic. So that's, that's what actually happened in the prequel books and everything. Um, which to me, and this is not canon, but it would presuppose that there was some kind of communism because the only way you could have AI that's not reactionary is in a non-reactionary society, right? Because mm -hmm. AI is just going to reflect whatever society it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the scary thing. This is why I keep saying, like, we're not ready for it. This, this all harkens back to one of my first videos, which is called Capitalism Has No Endgame, which is like, this technology is actually terrifying in the hands of capitalists. I'm not anti-technology at all. No. I'm not. But this stuff like drones, facial recognition, AI, the Boston Dynamics robots, all this stuff, which should be cool, 
mm. and which I'm inclined to want to think is cool, it's all just terrifying under capitalism. It's all terrifying being developed by people who have, again, no moral drive whatsoever. There's no ethics. There's no morality. Capitalism is amoral. The only driving motivating force is profits for capitalists and power and domination for the capitalist class. Yep. So that's all terrifying. Twin Rabbit. Who, by the way, will be having a stream with Luna soon. We had to push it back a few weeks because Luna and I had to travel longer than we expected. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, Luna and if you're really interested in these ideas of like farming and agriculture and off the grid as like a subject and all that, Luna, who grew up farming in Vietnam and Twin Rabbit, who's an indigenous comrade who knows a shitload about indigenous uh agricultural stuff <laughs> i'm sorry i'm doing such a bad job i need to get people to write little like um intros for themselves like you do it like a mm. comedy club mm -hmm. i'm so bad at, at, at introducing people anyway twin rabbit and luna will be having a conversation about this soon but twin rabbit says um step one move to nowhere step two a miracle happens kind of requires the nowhere that's a good fucking point especially if you live in the usa Where is if nowhere? you live in the usa you better look on a map and see what that nowhere is because guess what it's indigenous land yep and you are you know by default you're settling it i mean that's an uncomfortable truth maybe but it's a fucking truth mm. <sighs> being electrically off-grid or dietarily self-sufficient are different concepts from getting zero influence from society true i just have to push back though because like first of all how are you going to get electrically off grid you're going to buy a solar panel that was made in a factory mm -hmm. and when it's, it's broken it's, you will need somebody to repair it or we you know or, or to you know replace it it's pure ideology, ideology. I'm, I'm sorry to summon the cursed ghost of zizek who mm -hmm. we now know to be a reactionary mm -hmm. but um it is pure ideology to say that you live off the grid electrically you don't you're using technology that comes from the grid. Now, I know I'm being maybe a little pedantic because maybe you're talking about the power grid. Mm. And it's probably I'm not even saying it's bad to have solar panels and that, you know, mm. be self-sufficient with your energy. Mm. I'm not even saying that's bad. But don't convince don't lie to yourself and say you're living off the grid and you're like somehow disconnected from society. You're very connected to society. What are you going to do? You're going to fix your own solar panel when it goes out? You know, when like when it hails and your solar panel breaks, you you're going to go up there and you're going to refabricate it. Yeah. No, you're not. You're going to go order a replacement or get it fixed by a factory. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as being dietarily self-sufficient, Luna grew up farming and can tell you, you're not going to farm a piece of land. No, you don't. You by yourself. Impossible. No, you're going to die. After you like need one or two crops. fertilizer. See, depending on what you're growing, you need all kinds of resources and, also like, and help. It, especially when we, and we grow rice, we need a whole, you know, eater, eater, irrigation system yeah and we need the whole community to work on it you can just you cannot just like bring every bu bucket full of water every single time you want to water your rice farm there's no fucking way this is a better way yeah okay bp good good improvement capitalism is an amoral capitalism is the master's morality yeah mm. it's yeah. the it's the morality of the ruling class yeah you're right yeah. And, and this is this is actually yeah this this echoes exactly what martin engel said too which was that like Morality is class based and yeah. the, the, the morality in society is going to be. Um, it's going to be pushed by the ruling class, like in the feudal times, morality was feudal morality that was the that king, was dominated by the, the, the king and the nobles family, yeah. and the church and the other ruling classes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and now it's the capitalist morality is like the morality that's pushed on the working class by the capitalist class. Yeah. And even opposing moralities are defined by capitalism i have a great example i'm going to make a video on this one day but there's this movie called the lobster oh yeah it's a great movie it's a really good movie so in the movie the lobster i'm going to try to say this as quick as possible without terrible spoilers so mild spoiler alert but in the lobster the society like everyone has to fall in love mm. and if you don't fall in love by a certain time mm. you have one last chance to fall in love and if you fail they turn you into an animal. Mm. And then there's this like revolutionary force that's trying to overthrow that society. But their solution to it is like their counter demand is like nobody ever fall in love. Yeah. 
So it's like they're still defining their resistance to this, you know, established they reject society. They everything, anything related yeah. to that. They're framing it. They're using the same framing. So therefore, they both dramatic. Yeah, exactly. But they're using the same framing, mm -hmm. which is exactly what the Republicans and the Democrats do, right? Mm -hmm. They have this frame, which is the capitalist frame. Mm -hmm. And you can argue within that frame, but you can't escape it. It's what debate bros do. They create a fascist frame. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, is white genocide good or bad? Right? That's a fascist framing because white genocide doesn't exist. Yes. But they create this frame and then they have a whole debate where some people are like, oh, white genocide is fine. Oh, white genocide is bad. It's like, no, you're all just create. You're all just building the frame that white exist, genocide exists. It doesn't exist. Exactly. So... Yeah, you should My check point. out that movie. It's uh, interesting to watch. Yeah. And that's why we can't be too utopian and, and think we can construct this like perfect moral system before we've gotten rid of capitalism. Right now, the focus should be on dismantling capitalism, in my opinion. That's the way I, that's the way I see it, because that's the great barrier to history. Mm -hmm. It's the great barrier of humanity. It's what keeps us from coming together and starting to build actual collective decisions for ourselves. So anyway, um, but I, I say we table the discussion about sustainability and all this stuff until I think that's a good discussion for Luna and Twin Rabbit to have together. And y'all can ask all these questions to them because I think that they will show you that like, yes, we need to build more sustainable food. And yes, we need to have more sustainable electricity. And yes, we need to build technologies we need to develop our, our, our industry and technology so that it's sustainable, mm -hmm. but not use this framing that you're like somehow independent from the system or that your lifestyle decisions are going to make any kind of sweeping changes. No. They have to be systemic. Yeah, we need to get together. And, uh... and by the way, I happen to believe from talking to indigenous comrades that there's way, there's not nearly enough emphasis on ag in indigenous agriculture and uh, land uh, management and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and basically just like, instead of being like, oh, how can we use like technology to make more sustainable food? Like we need to look at indigenous ways of making sustainable food because before white people came to what we call North America, Turtle Island, mm -hmm. they had incredibly sustainable land management and food production mm -hmm. processes mm -hmm. So like, I can't remember, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing from memory here, but you know, if they had like forest land that they were managing, it would have so much deer and fish and, 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 you know, grain and food and stuff like that within this forest that like way more people could survive from that food per square acre mm -hmm. per, per acre mm -hmm. than, um, you know, like modern agriculture I mean, processes thing, could do. That is why Vietnam is now still one of the best country, agricultural country in the world in making mm -hmm. the most food, even though the size of our country is not that actually that big. That is why like, how you know like effective we are. Like in front of us right now is my parents' like vegetable like farm garden. It's just small, but like it's actually enough for them. If they want, they just never go to the market and buy the vegetable because they can manage this very, very well. And I mean, they, they just go to the the market in the village to buy the stuff that they do not grow, such as like broccoli or anything. But like in any situation, they just have they already have enough vegetable in their garden. So that's is how good we are at farming without exploiting the land. Mm -hmm. It's like that. I mean, it's well, you've been growing rice for what? Thousands, thousands of years, literally. At least ten thousand of years. Yeah, in this in this area. In this area, at least yeah. six thousand. Yeah. So I mean, it's like. Yeah, I mean, we need to look at how indigenous, how the land has been used, you know, in, by indigenous people for centuries mm -hmm. and how they were able to manage it for centuries mm -hmm. without fucking it all up. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's what, like, when you talk to indigenous people about land back, they always say, like, every time I've talked to indigenous people about land back, they always say, like, our first priority is, like, that we stop destroying the land. Yeah. You know, that we that we protect the land and the land is our mother and, like, you can't own your mother. Like, that's what uh, Silver Spook says all the time, our, our Hawaiian indigenous comrades. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, you can't own land. It should be at least like collective ownership of, on the land. And then as far as the whole thing, okay, uh, it just gets annoying. Like this, so much of this devolves into utopianism. 
So, so here's a question. Okay. A lot, lot of lots of you got tricked into that kind of belief. Do you think we should be against the concept of degrowth? A lot of Marxists say it's Malthusian. I think this is a false dichotomy. Yeah. Some, you know, it's like the the, the whole idea. It's like people act. People want to act like degrowth is like a on-off switch. Yeah. It's a binary. Like we're either growth or we or we're degrowth. But that's not. It, like reality is way more complicated than that. What we need to do is recognize that what we're doing right now is destroying the planet. Mm -hmm. What's causing that, is the, the, the base, the base cause of that is capitalism. The structural cause of that is capitalism, right? The, it's the way that we, as human beings right now, in this stage of humanity, have relationships with the means of production, including the land, mm -hmm. okay? So, the first thing we need to do is get rid of capitalism. We can't even have this conversation really. I mean, yeah, there are things we can do now to try to stop it and to try to buy more time and that sort of thing. But capitalism is the driving force that's destroying the planet. It's not industry. It's not technology, right? We've had industry and technology for centuries. All right. We might not have had like the kind of industry capitalism we have today. Is a mode of production where the capitalists hold the, you know, profit does it right and then that's what that's yeah. what makes all these decisions about how we yeah. farm and how we do all these things the problem is that lots of people just do not treat it as it actually is they, they either treat it as an ideology they either treat it as you know it bring like innovation and technology like no it's not it is just a mode of production the planet earth can sustain all of us and many many more like billions and billions more okay that's not we're, we don't need to like we don't need to have omnicidal kill everyone to save the planet that's not no. necessary that's it's, it's wildly like fanatically uh wrong and 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 dangerous thinking yeah okay? exactly so we don't need to like kill everybody to save the planet no at we, all we don't what we need to do is first and foremost get rid of capitalism we can capitalism now look at socialist countries like vietnam okay vietnam has the fastest regrowth of forest in asia. in asia right now okay by More far and away our country is covered in jungle who manages the reforestation efforts in vietnam the minorities. ethnic minorities the people who were indigenous to those lands for you know centuries are the ones that are managing the regrowth of those forests mm -hmm. vietnam is currently trying desperately to move to greener uh technologies for energy production so much so that like solar has has just become a huge part of the grid in Vietnam. Um, Luna, Luna did a thread about this the a while ago. The solar right? productivity of Vietnam is almost the same as solar uh, productivity in the USA. Yeah. I mean, compared to two countries, that our GDP is like 1% of your GDP, even though I hate the GDP index. But at least it says something. A country that was born back to the Sony 50 years ago. And forgot to have only one percent of their GDP now that have a, nearly the same solar productivity as the USA. Here, here's a pie chart that Luna posted a while back. So check this out, okay? This is uh, Vietnam current. Well, this is as of 2021. Yeah. So. Um, Coal, 34%, bad, right? Bad. But reduced massively yeah, it from like more 10 than years half earlier. Before. Yeah, yeah, it was more than half. Hydroelectric, 30%. Honestly, yeah. bad because the hydroelectric system... It chopped down a bunch of forests. It, it chops down forests and it also wrecks the Mekong Delta. Exactly. So, we want to reduce that too. Yeah, so this is actually a point of contention between Laos and Vietnam because mm. Laos wants to keep their big hydroelectric plants. and I mean, I can understand why because they... Yeah, they need energy. They yeah, and they don't have a lot of resources. Yeah. But... Vietnam doesn't. Vietnam is trying to because undo like, that. If they do that, because our Mekong Delta would die. Yeah. If they feel that. If they keep building more. So anyway, and they're, and they're actually trying to like they want to undo a lot of the hydroelectric. So they've got um, solar is now twenty four percent as of twenty twenty one, um, and that's a massive increase. Did we have? Did we have a chart from like before to show the difference? Yeah, we can hear like power chart Vietnam like two thousand. Oh, I can find it somewhere. But anyway, I mean, the point is that, that, that Vietnam is making massive strides and doing a much better job 
with like how they're producing energy, with their farming practices and that sort, and with their for reforestry, and they're not doing it through degrowth. In fact, the population of Vietnam is growing very fast. So it's yeah, kind of wild. From fifty three percent, it was wow. more than half. What year is that? It's like generation share two thousand and twenty. It's just one year. Yeah, that's true. Because Hanoi, because they did that huge solar drive. That's true. Yeah. That's crazy. That's wild. In just one year, it was down from 53% to 35%. I'm going to say that again. The power grid of Vietnam went from 53% coal to like 30-something 30 30 percent? Well, 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 I did wrong, wrong, wrong. What is it? I don't even know what it is. All right. I well, mean, we yeah. shouldn't do this live. I don't know. I, yeah. thought, I thought we had a chart already. Yeah. But at least within 10 years, it dropped by like 20%. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's the... Yeah, coal is bad for the environment, but poor countries use coal because it's one of the only resources they can afford. Yeah, exactly. I know. Well, why is that? <laughs> because of capitalism. That's we were born back to Stone Age 50 years ago. I mean, why, why can't Vietnam have nuclear energy? We can't. Because of capitalism. Because the USA won't allow them they to. They force us to sign an agreement to never have anything, to never develop anything related to nuclear power, including nuclear power plant. So what my, my basic point is... I don't like when people get wrapped up in words like degrowth because it's not a dialectical materials way of analyzing things. You need to have a comprehensive and historical view of things. Do we need to degrow? The answer is maybe, sometimes. So in some places, we do need to degrow. In other places, maybe we need more growth. For instance, Vietnam having growth in solar power was good. So it, it's like a, it's an ideological frame instead of a material frame. It's a utopian frame. It's saying, okay, if we just follow this plan of degrowth, we'll fix everything. But it's like it's not the opposite. It's not. It's not like because degrowth is kind of a ideological construction that we should just burn, baby, burn, and build as many coal plants as we want. That's also ludicrous and absurd. It's not the way you look at situations like this. Ecofascists use the argument that poor countries using coal means they deserve to be invaded. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, I create the material conditions in which you are forced to do something, and then I use what you're forced to do as justification to further oppress you. That's what it is. Yep, it is. It's literally like grabbing someone's hands and, like, forcing them to hit themselves and say, like, stop hitting yourself. You're like, and then going in and being like, okay, well, now I guess I get to just, like, control you because you can't stop hitting yourself. It's like, no, you're making them do that. Uh, this uh, person asked a question. I mean, um, the other thing, uh Yes, we technically, theoretically, we can do that. But again, having power, you know, security is very important to any country. And we need to be, you know, in charge of our own power, energy, something like that. So, I mean, it's also a very tough decision for Vietnam because we want to develop our own energy system. Yeah, Vietnam does not want to be reliant on any other country. Don't. Like, at this point and Especially that's and i understand why electricity we, you can't you can't just depend on other country like i understand why like because what if Ch what if china just decided like oh we're going to outlaw nuclear power whatever mm. anything can happen you know and then vietnam is like in the situation where they oh my gosh we've just we've been relying on this like you know so so i understand that i completely understand that they want to be self -reliant. trying to you know self-reliance independence and freedom something like that now um as far as that goes uh, Vietnam has extremely good conditions for things like solar and wind, some of the best in the world. Yeah. So it seems like it makes a lot of sense that they're trying to move in this like green direction. That's not true for everybody though. So we got to think about that. I mean, you know, power sharing now, look, and by the way, it's a contradiction. Yeah. It's, we got to recognize that it's a contradiction to say that Vietnam wants to be independent and self-reliant as a country in a better world. They would, we would have more power sharing and that sort of thing, but in this unstable, ferocious capitalist world uh i understand vietnam taking that position but that's different because they're not they're not saying like we they're not making the claim that they can live without the rest of the world they're just trying to as much as possible not rely on other countries that they can't control yeah exactly which you know that's uh, that's a lesson right there from irish comrades they rely relying on, on british power is a drain on the irish economy yeah, they can control everything in your life, and it is not good if you want to maintain your independence. Yes. And when and, and I would say this, too. It's very important not to get it ideologically twisted and make comparisons that are apples or oranges, right? So when we talk about self-reliance, right? Mm. 
Okay, when Vietnam says self-reliance, that is a completely different idea than the idea of individualist self-reliance. Oh, true. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention like that. Like to say yeah. that a, a nation of people mm -hmm. who have a shared collective history going back 10,000 years, right? Mm -hmm. At least. <laughs> that we can know of. Yeah, to <laughs> say that they should collectively try to be self-reliant in this capitalist hellscape is different than me saying, like, I as an individual will be self-reliant. Mm. For one thing, like the, the former like is... The cottage core people. Right. <laughs> cottage core solar punk people, yeah. The <laughs> former is possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible for Vietnam to become more and more self-reliant mm -hmm. in this capital cell world. Mm -hmm. The second is materially impossible. I mm -hmm. cannot, as an individual, be self-reliant, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just totally different things. They're completely different concepts, you know? So, um, yeah, in Laos and Vietnam, here's, here's a counterexample, too. Again, contradiction. Laos and Vietnam have an incredibly close relationship. I mean, the best in the world. And they do rely on each other for yeah, things. We like, yeah, because close. they really trust each other. Why? Because they've spent decades, well, really, a long, longer than that. Long time fighting with each other. <laughs> ah, fighting fighting with a, alongside with each other fighting against the USA. Fighting. Alongside. Fighting, fighting comma, with each other. <laughs> <laughs> fighting with each other. I mean, fighting alongside with each yeah. other. Um, but no, Laos and Vietnam are, have a really, really close relationship. And, I, and, and to be honest, China and Vietnam are trying to strengthen their relationship. You mm -hmm. know that the history of Vietnam and China is very complicated. And there are reasons that yeah, I mean, we've been they would be more skeptical I, I of each mean, other. Like women, you know, living with each other, struggling thousands of years. So, I mean, it's but, way beyond words. But I mean, it's just that like the material, the, the, the relationship between China and Vietnam is just is just different. It has a different historical development pattern than the relationship between Laos and Vietnam. But Laos and Vietnam is a great example of how, and Vietnam and Cuba is yeah. another great example of how countries can actually just work together. Mm. And, and that's where Vietnam doesn't have so much of the self-reliance philosophy. Mm. Like that's where Vietnam has a lot more of the, it has developed a lot more of that. For me. And, and they, Yeah, and they're coming along with China. Mm. Things are progressing with China. There, there, there are more and more examples of internationalist uh, mutual aid and mutual exchange mm -hmm between China and Vietnam every year. That's yeah. true, right? Yeah. So so hopefully that continues to develop. And eventually maybe China and Vietnam can get to the point where they could do energy sharing, that kind of thing. But anyway, so that's a tangent. Um, yeah, ASEAN has a lot of, um, there's a lot of ways in which Vietnam is working with, with ASEAN. Okay, how will food be different in a social society? Will it not have any toxic preserves like now and be healthier? Look. Again, this is like, I don't, I don't really like answering questions like this because if you don't know what utopianism is, last week we talked about it for like the entire episode of Breadcast. Mm. So I'm not being sarcastic and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, but like, if you really want the full answer to why I don't like answers to questions like this, it's because of utopianism. And we just last week talked about it. Yeah. The name of the episode is like, we just got back from utopia or something. And the, and the thumbnail says utopianism, mm. but it's like, I think the answer to this, yeah, my gut tells me yes, because why do they, why do we have toxic preservatives right now? Because like your factory is far away from you. Wait, wait, wait. Even more basic than that. Why is that factory for, why, why? why? It can last long. No, even more basic than that. Why? What's the root foundational cause? Why do we have toxic preservatives in food right now? Because of capitalism. Because of prop, because it makes capitalists make more profits. Exactly, because it can last longer, so they can sell longer for more people. So, I do believe that over time we will eliminate things like toxic preservatives in food in a post-capitalist society. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible under capitalism to even make plans like that, especially if you're talking globally. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, maybe we can ban them in the glo in the imperial core, but as long as it's making profits for capitalists to poison people's food, they're going to keep doing it. They're going to find ways to do it. We've known that a lot of these things have been poisoning us for like a century. And we haven't done anything about it because it makes profits for capitalists. Yep. But I don't want to sit here and say everything's going to be perfect once capitalism is eliminated. And I don't even think we're going to eliminate capitalism within our lifetimes. I think it's a multi-generational project. Right. Um, but once we eliminate capitalism, there will still be struggles. There will still be problems. There will still be generations and generations of struggle to undo the ideological and material damage of capitalism. Mm. 
I'm checking the chat. So. <laughs> half yeah. of the half of the preservatives are just told the bread looks awful. <laughs> that is sad, but true. That is true. Oh, the bread in Vietnam is so good, by the way. I've, I've missed it so much. Quick rise breaking process makes bread look terrible. <laughs> oh, see, this is why I'm looking forward to the conversation with uh, Twin Rabbit and Luna. To be honest, I'm not an expert on bread at all because I am expert on rice, so. Yeah, well, you use rice in the bread in Vietnam. Yeah. It's not utopian because social societies exist in the past. Well, I mean, I would say, though, that a, 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 the kind of socialism we're talking about hasn't existed yet, right? So we had, I, I think we had socialistic societies in the past, yes. But you're going to have a, an essential difference if you understand the way that development works, right? So, like, theoretically, I mean, you know, the way that I look at the world, if we overthrow capitalism globally all right let's look at let's look at the book let's look at the book right mm -hmm. i have a great i have i have um i have an image i have a illustration i can show you to, to, to illustrate what i'm talking about in the book because we're going to talk about development processes a little bit and then i guess we'll be out of time but i think this is a good question i'm not i'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad question and i'm not saying it's wrong to think about these things at all all right, let's see if this is going to work. I want to talk about. Um... Ah, here we go. It's perfect. I'm already set to the set to the right page. <laughs> I'm literally already on the right page. Is this going to work? Internet. Oh, I got to connect to your internet. Uh oh. Connect. All right. Um, Let's see if this is going to work. We should just have the book pulled up like at all times. All right. Here we go. Here we go, folks. Let's take a little ride to the book zone. <laughs> Lotsu, don't forget the venison and other indigenous food that lasted a real long time with only natural ingredients. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Like, there are preservatives that are like mm -hmm. not going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Salt, <laughs> for Salt example. Is, yeah. <laughs> not necessarily great for your health, but okay. But at least. All right. We just talked about this. This is the last thing we talked about last week. So this is actually a good thing to set up real quick. And I just want to. I just wanted to use this graphic really. So. Um, here, I wonder if I can just delete all this stuff. So this is um this is how this is how we look at development and dialectical materialism, okay? So you have your initial form, the contradicting subject, right? Oh great. Is this gonna do this? It's not it's not gonna work. Eh? This there's a connection problem between the tablet and the computer i might not be able to use my little graphic oh no okay great this works okay so okay just real quick real quick before it loses connection again you got your initial form your contradicting subject right so let's say just broadly broadly speaking mm -hmm. you've got socialistic forms of society Oh, shit. Okay. Right. And then you've got like capitalist imperialism, right? So you had folks who were like chill, living their best lives before capitalism invaded their world. And you have imperialism, which contradicted and invaded it, right? And that leads to this um, colonial yeah. subject model, right? Like, let's just use Vietnam as an example. Yeah. So I'm, and we're being, I'm, I'm being, I'm very much simplifying things. So don't get it twisted. I know that I'm really simplifying things. I just want to explain what I mean by this new form of socialism that we're trying to build being, being different. So Vietnam had kind of like, you know, this was like a, a thousand years ago or more. They had this matriarchal society that was kind of more egalitarian and more socialistic, right? 
fair to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they got conquered and then they got colonized. Yep. I'm, I'm glossing over a lot, mm -hmm. but basically in a, in a millennium, they got colonized, right? Mm -hmm. And they became colonial subjects, right? Under capitalist imperialism. Then that was contradicted against their socialist revolution, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have capitalism versus socialism. Those are going to contradict. And they will theoretically, in the future, create communism, a stateless, classless society, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way that's theoretically going to work. Colon communism will emerge as a contradiction between colonialism and socialist revolution, mm -hmm. or capitalism and socialist revolution, right? Same, same thing, really. So this will be a higher form of the previous initial form. The unity will be a higher form of this, the original initial form. So it will be, yes, it will have many of the characteristics of the previous form. Yes. But it will have new characteristics as well. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that they're exactly the same thing. Mm, no, they are higher. It's a higher form. Yeah. Higher form of it. Because it's, it's had a lot more uh, development. Yeah. You know, and it's been through different it, stages. Even though it still carries the old, you know, parts of the old society, but it also at the same time develop new parts. That is why it, you know, change right. and develop into a new form now. For one thing, there will be, like, so for instance, there will be um, technologies that developed under capitalism that didn't exist in this older form, right? Mm -hmm. So the, t the, the, the society that existed, you know, let's say, 2000 years ago, 3000 years ago in Vietnam, that was more socialistic. It didn't have factories. It didn't have the internet. It didn't have trains. And a lot of the things that developed under capitalism, even though they were developed in an evil system, we call capitalism. And even though currently they're being used for evil in capitalist societies, things like trains, they can be useful in the higher form of socialism yeah. that develops next. I mean, we still have trains now. It's still running. Not like your chain system, it's decaying. <laughs> but my point is that, like, yeah, it's going to be a different proposition. It's going to be a different, uh, essentially different form of society, even if it reflects back on that previous form of society, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I don't know. And, yeah, different places are going to have totally different ways of interfacing with nature and with each other. Right. I mean, there's just agriculture varies so much from one part of the world to the next. Oh my God, it's a chicken. <laughs> the chicken's saying it's time to it's time to finish. Not yet, chicken. We got six more minutes. No, chicken. Six more minutes. Chicken's trying to push us off the stage. Mm -hmm. Um. So I rushed through that, but I hope that that made sense. I hope that that was somewhat useful. If you want to learn more, you can check out the book at banyanhouse.org slash shop. Everyone ignore this chick. You know, it's like trolls. You just got to ignore the trolls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to ignore the troll chicken. Yeah. Banyanhouse.org slash shop. You can get the translation Luna made of the book for free there and the EPUB version, or you could buy the print copy if you want. Eddie says, sometimes I feel like I'll never fully understand this stuff. I just fall, feel so behind on it, but I'll see, try, keep trying. It's... It's really like, I mean, I don't, I don't say this to make you feel bad, but because um, I felt like you for a long time. But once you get, once a few things click in your head, it all clicks. Mm. The most important thing is understanding internal and external relationships define everything. And understanding development. And once you understand those two things, like everything else, I believe, kind of starts to fall into place. Mm. We do have a Discord, but I mean, we're about to like major overhaul it. So maybe ask us in a month or two. Honestly, now is not the time to join the Discord, in my opinion. Um, Luna and I have neglected it for basically it's an entire existence, which we feel really bad about. And we're making a plan now yeah. to engage with the Discord meaningfully. I think we have a plan on how we can actually incorporate it into yeah. our lives. I don't know how people... Can, ma can manage. I don't either. Know? I don't either. Can manage between YouTube channels, Twitter accounts, and then Discord. Like, yeah. how? It's a lot. It's overwhelming. But very soon we're going to be able to do that. But yeah, I mean, you have to just keep um, keep struggling. And if you have if you have specific questions, or if there's anything that I just said that you don't understand, yeah. you know, 
that helps us. We would love to, you know, to find the answers, would you? Ah, okay. So when I said past socialist societies, I was talking about state socialist countries in the past. I mean, there's socialist countries like Vietnam is socialist now. If you, if you, if you, G if you GDR? believe that, well, yeah, the USSR. I guess they're talking the about USSR. USSR in this mm -hmm. But they never achieved communism. They yeah. never got rid of capitalism entirely. Yeah. So I mean, then they never claimed to. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, they so yeah, they would still have many of the problems. I mean, you know, and, and again, like I said. Uh, even after we overthrow capitalism, there will be plenty of problems for us to deal with and uh, struggles, and it will be generations of work. But 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 overthrowing capitalism is what will allow humanity for the first time to collectively start writing our own history. Mm -hmm. To have a, to have actually the true freedom to build a new society. Now you don't have. Yes. Yeah, that freedom and to make these big important decisions mm -hmm. right now the people making those decisions are the capitalists and they're only mm -hmm. saying i want to the answer is i don't know can i profit off of it to the point where like we act like things are impossible because it's not profitable right like mm -hmm. we say like oh can we stop relying on fossil fuels and they'll say well no there's no way that would ever be profitable it's like that's not the question that I asked. Um, let's end the stream, Luna, on the old video we made on May Day. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So this is a three minute and twenty five second video. Luna did the camera work. I was a much skinnier person with a much you were so skinny. I forgot about much that. better head of hair because I didn't have this terrible, horrible haircut. Um. So let's check out that video. If you haven't seen it before, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you share it around. I'll put the link in the, oh shit. I'll put the link in the um, chat right now. Please share this video around. Show everybody what happened to May Day in the USA. So we're going to play this video and we'll be done. So uh, Luna and I will go ahead and say goodbye. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Luna, we'll see you in two days mm -hmm. on Mooncast mm -hmm. at youtube.com slash Luna Oi live. And twitch.tv slash Luna underscore boy. Yeah. Oh. oh. Luna underscore oi. On Twitch. On Twitch. Luna, Luna underscore on Twitch. oi. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I've had a good time. I hope you have as well. Enjoy this little video. I hope you can all hear it. Full screen it. I will. Look at how skinny I was. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm American Johnson here in Hanoi, Vietnam. Today is May 1st, International Workers' Day, and as you can see, it's kind of a big deal around these parts. Here in Vietnam, May Day is a national holiday, a four-day weekend at that, as workers celebrate the international labor movement by visiting their families in their hometowns and going to festivals like the one we're at today. Of course, Vietnam's not alone in celebrating International Workers' Day. It's a public holiday in most countries around the world, from Asia to Africa to Europe to South America. In fact, the United States is among a scant minority of countries that do not celebrate International Workers' Day on May 1st. So you might be surprised to hear that the origin of International Workers' Day was an event that happened over 130 years ago right in the U.S. of A. It all started back on May 1st, 1886. On that day, the mighty gears of American industry ground to a halt when tens of thousands of workers protested across the country to demand an eight-hour workday. Not surprisingly, the police suppressed these peaceful protests violently, particularly in Chicago, where police inflicted beatings and random shootings on the protesting laborers for days on end. By the time the dust settled, six unarmed workers were murdered by American police and enraged Chicagoans occupied a place called Haymarket Square. The police rushed violently into the crowd when someone whose identity was never revealed detonated a bomb that killed a police officer. The police opened fire into the crowd and by nightfall a dozen or more people, police and protesters alike, were dead. The reaction to these bloody battles between American police and the labor movement was martial law. Labor leaders were rounded up and falsely convicted of murder and a general crackdown ensued on workers demonstrating for more humane conditions throughout the land of the free. Fast forward a few decades to early May of 1894 during the Pullman Railroad strike. More bloody labor protests erupted with at least 24 people killed. 
Then President Grover Cleveland, along with Congress, wanted to quell these protests. So the political machine quickly rushed through a public holiday for workers with the hope of quieting protests and building support among the American proletariat for the state. A natural choice for the date of the holiday would be May 1st, already established as International Workers' Day around the Western world, but Cleveland was conscious of the bloody events of the Haymarket Affair and didn't want to encourage similar protests among workers. Thus, he chose the much more neutral first Monday of each September for Labor Day in America. It's sad and shameful that these important events of labor history have been so completely and utterly wiped from the public consciousness of American workers to the point where the majority of other nations in the world commemorate the sacrifice of American workers while we ourselves treat May 1st as we would just any other day. And why don't we remember the sacrifices of these American workers in America? Well, because the capitalist oligarchs who run our nation don't want us thinking about the workers they exploit and murder to maintain a position of privilege in our society. If you live in the USA, I hope you'll join me in spreading the word about the history of May 1st and the Haymarket Affair with your fellow workers. And remember the names of the martyrs who were killed in Chicago so that their fellow Americans might have better working conditions. I'm American Johnson, wishing you a happy International Workers' Day from Hanoi, Vietnam. If you like this video, 